And once again, we have a chapter without any story, so you're going to get once uh, patented Luminaire double header. Woo! All right, uh, just the only thing unique about this level is the moving background. Um, bio suits again, so can't do those guys. This is annoying because they are all on invincibility, mighty enemy panels. So that means they're invincible, but I'm not. So I have to take the turns to just pick them up and throw them off the top um, the panels to actually do damage so you need a pretty big rugged team to get this job done it's just it can be tough depending on your team but really it's just kind of time consuming of course eventually you could take advantage and get to the invincibility panel in the middle um, and that's about it so with that said I have to scour the guide for a class to do that I have yet to review, that we've seen. Because there are, there is maybe one or one class we haven't seen yet. Um, should probably be a monster though, since I just did two humans in a row. Let's see, we got the shroom, do the slumber cat, zombie. The Gargoyle Demon Beast. Those guys are stupid. Mystic Beast. I think I did them. Here I come. Succubus. Here, I come. Here we go. Let's do the Here Dragon Zombie. Yeah, that's that Here skeletal dragon bone crusher type guy. Okay. Here we go. Dragon Zombies are bloody hard to kill. The, oh, so does that mean I have to do this in a British accent? They're tough monsters with high stats and a base ability that keeps them alive from fights that aren't incre incredibly dangerous. Use Blood Insanity and Vendetta to further increase the threat from Dragon Zombies as they chomp away as targets. Uh, there isn't much subtlety to the class. They have high damage skills that don't rely on many tricks or ailments to get the job done. If you need another slugger, you found a good one. A bloody good one, in fact. Uh, they magic change into spears. They have poor movement of only three. Uh, they are 50% resistant to fire. Well done, chap. 75% uh, uh, weak to wind, unfortunate. And 25% resistant to ice. So, ice. So, overall, uh, it balances out. Uh, the dragon zombie has immortal body as their primary ability, which halves the damage from physical attacks. And... My turn. Not bad, I say. Alright, I'm gonna just have to drop that. If I have any British viewers, I'm sure I offended every single one of them. Uh, yeah, uh, this is another very tankish class. Very sturdy, hard to kill. Uh, half damage from physical attacks, which is a majority of them. That's pretty nice. Uh, afterwards, we got Blood Insanity, which increases damage dealt by 30% against targets with under 50% health. Uh, might as well learn it. It's cheap, and it's, you know, makes you good for finishing off targets. Death Fang, or, I guess you could think, if you put them in a combo, if you put them in the later half, their damage will be much higher, when um, the first parts of the combo get them underneath half health. Death Fang, 30 ability, doubles damage against paralyzed targets. Um, if you have, if you are paralyzed happy, then sure, go ahead and learn that, I guess. But it seems pretty situational to me. And finally, Vendetta. Counterattacks gain a 10% chance to land a death blow. Death blow means you will outright kill the target regardless of their HP. Um, 10% is kind of low. What's their counter rate? 2. Decent. Um, I guess... I guess if you had, since they can learn three, you might as well teach them this over Death Fang. Uh, but overall, probably find a better ability to learn from another class. Uh, let's see. The Skeletal Dragon, the base, has an HP aptitude of 110, SP 80, Attack 130, Defense 130, Intelligence 70, Resistance 70, 
hit 90 and speed 100. So they hit hard and they um, take damage like a pro. However, the resistance sucks. Magic is their bane. Uh, yes. So, uh, very sturdy tankish type character. Pretty good. Fuse them with wood golems for really good survivability with the HP regeneration. Or, fuse them with slimes, where non-elemental damage does 50, um, only does half damage as well. So, basically all normal attacks that don't have an elemental property, which is a lot of them, will only do 25% damage. Nice. Uh, after the Skeletal Dragon, we have the Death Dragon, the Cursed Dragon, the Mystic Dragon, the Dark Dragon, and the Hell Dragon. Oh yeah. Hell Dragon has HP aptitude of 135, SP 90, Attack 155, Defense 155, Intelligence 80, Resistance 80, Hit 115, and Speed 125. Walking tanks, just magic. Watch out for magic. <laughs> Uh, let's see, they magic change into a spear, so again, both the slime and the, and the, uh, dragon zombie make good candidates for a heavy knight, which is a defensive spear using class. Now imagine giant infusing a slime dragon zombie magic change onto a heavy knight. That is one sturdy motherfucker. 50% damage reduction from the front, 50% damage reduction from physical attacks, and 50% damage reduction from non-elemental attacks. That's like the ultimate physical tank. Uh, just know that giant magic change usually only lasts one turn, maybe two. <laughs> that's unfortunate, but still, that's a pretty nice theoretical loadout if you think about it. Alright, their first uh, uh, skill is Smelly Breath. Powers E, and it hits directly in front of you. Very weak. Power this up a lot with mana to get more damage. Uh, Longhorn Fang also hits point blank, but I think it also knocks the enemy two spaces back, so you need a yellow space. The power is D, so it's a bit stronger than Smelly Breath. Use this if uh, use this if there's a knockback space. Undead Strike also hits a single person, but it has a range of five tiles. This will be your single attack of choice. The power is much better. As well, as well as the range. You will be using this primarily. And not to mention, the, the skill attack itself looks freaking beastly. It's pretty cool. And then finally, we have Darkness Breath. Um, powers A, so that's good. It can cause Deprave. And it, it's, it hits uh, four enemies. It's the first one right in front of you, and then a horizontal row of three right past that. The guide says, Darkness Breath has several major benefits over all other Dragon Zombie skills. Massive damage, good status ailment, and finally some area of effect potential. Undead Strike is the best ability for times when you can't get into close range. Darkness Breath should be used for almost all other attacks. Uh, keep it well upgraded as long as you can afford the SP cost. So yeah, good damage, good defense. Uh, there are two... Um, as for the magic tank attacks, we got Living Fossil, powers F, so it's really weak, although I think that attack is awesome. Uh, it's a straight row of four or five, I can't remember. And then finally, Corpse Costume is the same, it's uh, one higher, so I think it's either five or six in a row. I think it's five. And um, I think you have to step back in a, a space for this one to work. But the power is only D, unfortunately. Uh, still, I, I like attacks that hit in a straight line. You'd be surprised how often that's useful in the item world. But overall, the the attacks are kind of weak, but good area of effect. And, you know, the damage reduction is good for spear users, considering spears are more defensive uh, units overall. And that's the Dragon Zombie. Uh, really cool... A really cool unit aesthetically. Uh, some decent attacks, and, and just a outright bitch to kill. Like I know I said bouncers were annoying, but these guys have the stats and abilities to make you pull your hair out. If your magic, if your magic characters are dead, you just run away from dragon zombies. I'm telling you. 
I needs my bone saw. I should not have to tell you that reference. I just think that's one of the funniest characters in all the movies. Again, I was not yawning before I started recording this. This is not fair. Oh, this is for my, for my lord. lord. And I believe that's the first time we've seen Vanner Gandar. Learned at level 80. Pretty cool, right? And you and you saw that area of attack. That's really nuts, isn't it? I guess I should talk about my heavy attacks. Damn it! <laughs> Trying to get him some kills. Actually, I, I already talked. I've mentioned the Heavy Knight several times, but I have not gotten to his description yet. I'll talk about him right now. The Armor Knight. Alrighty. Uh, Disgaea usually lends itself towards offense over defense because your party gets to have all of its members act before any of the enemies or on a given turn. However, it's foolish to ignore the power of a few good defenders, such as an Armor Knight. One character with extremely strong armor and high health can lure enemies forward and trap those foes in a tight formation. While they're all chomping on the tough guy, the rest of your party can lie in wait and come toward the next round for a brutal series of special attacks. So what do you have in your armor knights? They have extremely high HP and defense. Their abilities give them additional damage reduction as well. Uh, Advanced Guard is the best choice for luring enemies without losing your character. The other options are more situational depending on weapon selection and whether you're using your character aggressively or solely as a distraction. Armor Knights also have excellent throwing range. Being able to catapult someone six extra squares should not be ignored. Agreed. This lets you destroy, uh, deploy runners so that they can reach far points in a single turn. Oop, take a break. So... What kind of service do you have lined up for us next, Judge Nemo? You better keep us entertained, or some of us might even start asking for compensation for having to put up with all of this. Are you talking about me, Mr. Vampire? What are you insinuating? Up next is the proof. Here's the proof that demons aren't needed in the human world. Where do these demons come from? This is Earth. What are these demons doing here? They're not demons. They're clones of demons, to be specific. Demon clones, you say? They are man-made demons, created from the demon cells that I obtained through the deal I made with the Corruptorment. The humans have created their own demons? That is just... Barbaric! Wow! I had no idea! So they're just like Desco, creatures created by humans. Don't tell me that Dad is helping to create these demons too. This is supposed to be in my dream. That would never happen. Never! Isn't this fun, Valvatores? Humans have surpassed demons. You understand now, right? There's no room for demons anywhere anymore. Neither in this world, nor the other world. Demons no longer have the power to admonish humans. I'm the only one who can administer punishment. Nonsense! You're just a fool who keeps piling up sins under the name of Judge! Think you can replace real demons with artificial ones? Don't make me laugh! Haha! <laughs> I, we, we will show you the power of real demons! <laughs> Nemo, that punts. Uh, this level actually almost got me. Enemy boost and recovery. And they're all in pairs. Now, what I did was I made a beeline for the death blow block. If I threw it on the on the pink, 
I could kill them all in one hit. However, the computer is not necessarily restrained to the pink squares. They can move anywhere they want. So I end up sacrificing a, a lot of units to complete this level. I was a risk taker. But uh, enemy boost 50%, that's, you know, it's annoying. Considering not all of my characters can really handle I that kind of power. power in my finger. I mean, he says he has more power in his finger, but... Not when they're on that tile. Anyway, uh... Here I come. This lets you deploy runners so that they can reach far off points Here in a single turn. You can use it to throw vulnerable come. people away from trouble or get powerful characters, powerful characters into trouble. In a pinch, armored knights can also throw monsters away from your party and attempt to have the creatures waste their rounds coming back into range. Yep. I have more power in my finger. Uh, let's see. Uh, to unlock this class, raise a warrior to level 20 or higher. Pretty easy. Um, yeah, their movement is 3, which is really annoying. They actually do need a pair of shoes and to upgrade their movement. But their throwing range is 6. Uh, they are prof they are proficient in spears and axes. However, I recommend spears uh, for the spears increased uh, defense. And um, well, I didn't have anyone else using spears at the moment, and I had already had a character using axe. I just think it suits them better. Although, again, I really don't care for spears and their procl proclivity for moving you. Which can be annoying if you're if you're using them as a stopgap for choke points. Um, they are 25% weak to fire and 25% resistant to wind and ice. All right. Their ability Aegis uh, damage is re decreased by 30% when this character is attacked from the front. All right. So I said it was half, but 30%. Uh, still not bad. It's unfortunate that it has to be from the front, but what are you going to do? Uh, you can change the direction your character faces by holding square and pressing over a uh, moved unit and pressing the control pad. So that's nice. Um, you know, so if you're in a corner, you will be attacked. You will increase your chances of being attacked in the front. Um, also, you can learn the ability from the bio suit which uh, makes you turn towards your target, so you will always take 30% less damage. Pretty nice. Uh, second ability, Last Fortress. Defense and resistance are increased by 50% when this character's HP falls below 25%. Um, that ratio is not in your favor. Uh, it's not going to come in handy. Advanced Guard. Damage to taken decreases by 80% when defending. That's a great amount. Uh, set them up in a quarter and defend, and you will watch the damage done to your unit drop dramatically on top of the damage reduction from Aegis. So, really nice ability if you plan on um, using him as a, a point guard. Because that's a severe damage reduction. Magic change a slime or a skeletal dragon onto him, and you will watch that damage plummet. And finally, Spear Defense. 30% of base attack is added to defense when a spear is equipped. Uh, not bad if you want to actually do damage with your armor knight as opposed to just have them be, uh, you know, defend. So, th this makes them good at both attacking and defending with, with a spear, which you should be using anyway. So overall, decent abilities. Uh, like I said, the, the one where you turn to face from a bio suit could be handy. Uh, there's also the armor mastery from the warrior class, which increases your defense and HP aptitudes by 30% when armor is equipped. So that would also be handy. Uh, too bad he can't learn Fuka's uh, ability to take 50% less damage from specials. Anyway, the heavy knight has an HP aptitude of 120, SP 80, attack 110, defense 130, intelligence 70, resistance 110, Hit 100 and speed 70. Uh, pretty much what you'd expect. Then we have the Iron Knight, the Steel Knight, Mithril Knight, Adamant Knight, and the Aegis Knight. Aegis Knight has an HP aptitude of 145, SP 90, Attack 135, Defense 155, Intelligence 80, Resistance 135, Hit 125, and 
uh, speed 80. So unlike the slime and the hell dragon that have um, skeletal dragon that have great defense but lack lustre resistance, uh, the heavy armor knight actually specializes in both, having a pretty good, uh, better than average resistance stat at aptitude of 135 at its final stage, and then just great HP and defense on top of that. So by the very end game. Uh, all this damage reduction will kind of be obsolete. Even with the 80% reduction, uh, you're like in the land of carnage. This makes no difference because they they will be overkilling your maximum HP by a few times over. So 80% isn't gonna cut it. That said, in the meantime, uh, I think on certain maps they are quite useful. And because they use spears, and because there are two very defensive monsters in the slime and dragon, they make good match change partners, and you will find the damage reduction to be quite nuts. Um, so in the long run, I'm sorry, by by the end of the long run, their use you know, their usefulness will eventually dwindle. However, until that point, until you actually reach that point, they are quite a useful class. Not to mention throwing range alone, base of six. That will never not be useful. Even if you never fight with the unit, a throw range of six is crazy. Um, upgrade in the character world, and then use amazing throw with a professor, and his throw range can be as high as as twelve. You can throw twelve spaces. Think about that. Um, that's why armor knights are champ. Their boss. I, <laughs> I, lean back from the mic so I can breathe in, and yawn. So as you can see, I'm trying to be very cautious and take out these enemies from afar. But I think they're gonna get a bit aggressive and move towards me. I, I wish spears were better. They're just the damage is mediocre, and oh, I hate this how the skills move you. It's just super annoying, and it makes it very hard. Um, it makes it very hard to get attacks to to, to be able to find the space to get a lot of these attacks to work. I mean. Like in some of the old, like in the older games, I think they all moved you. Um, I think in this game there are far less um, spear skills that move you after you use them. So I'm trying to find an attack that'll hit both of these ghosts, ghosts at once. Yeah. Yeah. As you can see, I don't have many. Most of my good characters are gone. I mean, Volcanus was never my strongest unit. And get rid of one of them. I can't believe he moved on to the purple. So I'm pretty much in the clear at this point, but yeah, you you saw how many a lot of good men died that day. There. I go. Taste the rainbow, motherfucker! All right, two more chapters down. Not bad, guys. Well, you guys did take Hugo down, right? Oh, this is so entertaining. However, how are you guys able to use so much power when there is so little fear energy going around? It's all thanks to sardines! Sardines? The fish? Your powers are derived from sardines? That is correct. That is not correct! I hate fish! 
Don't include me in this! Mr. Vampire is probably the only one here who could obtain power from eating sardines. Each of us has a reason to get stronger without depending on fear energy. Our strong will and motivation are the sources of our power. Uh-huh. I'll be able to create much stronger demons once I analyze your powers in depth. I really appreciate this, guys. Demons? You mean those clones, right? Impossible! They are nothing but destructive weapons. Demons exist to admonish humans. Humans shouldn't be creating such things, ever! Demons aren't destructive weapons. We are the messengers of darkness, tasked with admonishing humans. Admonishing humans through fear? The messengers of darkness? How can you be so arrogant? Where were you when you were needed most, huh? Did you give humans the admonishment they deserved after what happened back then? No, you did not! What are you doing in this world where innocent lives are forsaken and life is extended to those who deserve to die? Hey, what are you saying? You still don't get it. Demons have neglected humans. Demons are useless. Valvatoris, you seem to have a great goal in mind, but it's worthless if you can't execute it. Besides, even if demons have finally remembered their responsibilities, it's too late. Demons should be content with acting as smart weapons, being deployed as I see fit. So, do you intend to destroy the human world with your weapons? If these things did invade Earth, all the hard-headed adults would get beaten up so quickly! Exactly. There's no use in admonishing humans. They deserve to wallow in regret, fall to despair, and head toward destruction. A final boss must kill everyone. That's imprinted into Desko's mind, too. But Desko was only going to kill everyone except for Daddy and Big Sis. Judge Nemo won't allow that. He'll destroy everyone, including Miss Fuka. I think he's crazy. Destroy humans, huh? What could be fueling all of your hatred towards them? Hatred? That word doesn't even come close to describing my feelings towards them. Humans. They deserve to go extinct. Those worthless creatures continue to hate, envy, and fight each other to this day. They kill each other to indulge their desires. Isn't that pathetic? They're hopeless. That's why humans must be annihilated down to the very last one. Gods, angels, and demons, none of them are willing to do it. So I volunteered to be the bad guy. You have no right to be their ruler. The ruler of a world must protect its residents, not destroy them! Please, stop this nonsense! Humans still aren't as hopeless as you think they are! Sure, I might not have the right, but becoming the ruler was inevitable for me just happened while I was working on gaining enough power to destroy the human race. Hmm? Did he just totally ignore our, t uh, Volcanus? Well, see ya. I'll go prepare the next show for you. That man, he didn't seem to notice the angel. He completely acted like Volcanus didn't even exist. He didn't see her? Why not? She was standing right in front of him. He... he's lost his faith, thanks to his abundant hatred for the world. Human faith. The awe energy is the source of all celestial servants' very existence. Humans that have strong faith receive more protection from the heavens, and sometimes they get to encounter us, holy beings. However, those humans that have no faith... Don't receive any protection, nor will they ever get to see you. It's a mercenary system, and you guys call yourselves holy. Judge Nemo, a man who denies demons and distrusts angels. Dad, please tell me it's not true that you didn't create Desco. But you were doing research day and night after Mom died. With your skills and knowledge, the biosuits and demon clones could have been... Are you okay, Big Sis? Sorry. I really don't feel like talking to you right now. 
big sis.